up and welcome to the Beneath the Dirt Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Bone. Thank you for tuning in. Episode 114 of the show. Moving right along, coming towards the end of the year. We're about halfway through December right now. And a lot of shit's going down. Usually, December is like a dead month for new music, music news in general. But because of everything that went down this year, I think we just got... People just said, fuck it, and they're just putting out music, and they don't care if it's right before the holidays and all that good stuff. So we got quite a few shit to talk about. A little surprise towards the end of the video that I won't have in the description of this video, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's get it some... Hold on. Before we get it to news, thank you for tuning in. I don't know if I thanked you, but thank you. Whether you're on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform, app, whatever, thank you. Much love. Much appreciated. Subscribers over on YouTube are steadily rising. Dope. Getting closer to that 1,000 milestone, if you will. Very dope. Much love. Thank you for tuning in again. Now, let's get into some new music. Benny the Butcher comes out. With a brand new single, 3.30 in Houston. This dude's going to be angry. Y'all shot Benny up. And now Benny's talking about it. He was on the Joe Budden podcast talking about Joe Budden asked him, how did this change you? And he said, this this type of shit makes you into something that you don't want to be. And this dude's going to go to fuck in. This track produced by Derringer and Beat Butcher is a dope track. This is the kind of production I like hearing Benny on. Super dope. Love it. He's talking his shit on here. The cover art is him in the PJ on his way back home after getting shot. Super dope track. Uh, Only bumped it a couple times through, but it is going to be off. The very first Griselda Records motion picture starring Benny the Butcher. West Side Gun's also in it. It's called Conflicted. Uh, The soundtrack drops January 8th. So this is the first single off it right here. Hype for that. These Griselda dudes. No signs of slowing down at all. Dude's been staying busy all 2020. Benny dropped the burden of proof just a few months ago. Conway put out like three projects this year. West Side, same. And then you got Armani Caesar, Boldy James. Plus the shitload of features these dudes did throughout the year. Staying busy. Benny killed it on this new track. Go peep that. It's out everywhere if you ain't checked it. And speaking of Conway the Machine, he's talking about From King to a God, the deluxe edition dropping this Friday. One of the best albums of 2020, if you ask me, from King to a God. The Deluxe Edition is dropping this Friday. No word on how many new tracks will be on the Deluxe. I've seen Deluxe Editions have three, four new songs all the way to a whole fucking new album. A la Jim Jones with El Capo Deluxe. That was 15 brand new songs. It was like a whole new album. So no word on how many songs we're getting from Conway, but I'm hyped for this one, man. Love Conway. Dude's been killing it 2020. I said he was going to be Griselda MVP. He's easily Griselda MVP in my opinion, but he just might be overall MVP of 2020. Dude's been fucking killing it, man. So I'm hyped for the deluxe. I wonder if there'll be hard copies for it. Dude put out hard copies of From King to a God. And them shits was $100. So, hyped for that. Dropping this Friday. New Conway already. Super dope. Keeping it in New York. We got Riggs. He dropped his new album, produced entirely by Future Wave. Albums called Substance Abuse. His partner in rhyme, Mooch. Dropped his album to Fifth Power last week. Riggs is of of the cloth. 
the cloth. I've been talking about these guys throughout 2020. Riggs, my favorite member of the cloth. And I bumped this album probably one and a half times through. So, you know, basically one listen through. Dope album, dope production. I know Future Wave's been staying busy doing collaboration albums with a bunch of people. But I think this is my first time hearing Future Wave, and I love his production. You know, I, I might have heard it before. I don't know. I'm not too knowledgeable on Dude, so I won't front like I am. But this project right here, super dope. Hard copies are available. You know, I had to cop myself a CD. The cover art is fucking devastating, too. Look at that shit. But Riggs brings it on here. I love his, like, kind of, like, smooth style, but it's gangster as fuck at the same time. Dude absolutely kills it. And the production from Future Wave, super dope. Rochester, New York. That's where the cloth comes from. Riggs. So go peep that. If you ain't checked that shit out either, it's available everywhere. Like I said, hard copies are available. You just got to follow Riggs or Future Wave on any social medias to get the links and all that good shit. So if you can't ever put two and two together when I tell you hard copies are available, just find the artist page on like Twitter, Instagram, or fucking whatever, and you'll find the links. Ain't too hard. A little detective work. You know, people ask me from link, for links from time and time again. I don't mind, but a little bit of research never hurt nobody either. I think uh, I think you guys could do that shit. But let's talk about last week, d went live. Talked about the current state of Cottonmouth and rumors and whatnot. A lot about Daddy X. A lot about fuck's that, William Mosley, fraud-ass motherfucker. But this week, we had Kevin Zinger, Johnny Richter, at Obnoxious Go Live with a special appearance over the phone from Chucky Chuck, the DGAF general. Not a lot of news was talked about on this live stream. Uh, they talked about Obnoxious. Talking about uh, his new singles coming, new videos, new album dropping. Um... Then the chat asked Johnny Richter uh, if new King Spade or Cottonmouth Kings is coming. And he kind of looked like, I don't know. Like he just did, he gen- genuinely didn't know. And Kevin Zinger was like, yes, you're going to get Cottonmouth Kings and or King Spade in 2021. <laughs> it's just funny that Johnny Richter didn't know the answer to that. When after last week, you know, d Loke was talking about he been hitting Richter up trying to get him in the studio working on new songs, and he just ain't here from him. But then the following week, you got Johnny Richter at the Subnoise Compound with Zinger, the CEO, if you will, and talking about cranking out new songs with Obnoxious and just working on new shit in general. So... Apparently, Johnny Richter is, in fact, in the studio working on new shit. It sounded like he was working on solo shit the way they were talking during his live stream. So that's dope to hear and see. Um, so after you know hearing D-Loke saying he couldn't get him in the studio to work on new music or whatever, it's Cottonmouth Confusion Part 3. You know, we did the first two episodes, Cottonmouth Confusion... Cottonmouth Confusion 2, which I did with the Checkmate Industry guys. Shout out to Jordan and Daniel. And uh, it's just, it's still confusing. The whole fucking sub noise, Cottonmouth Kings thing. It's confusion. I'm going to have to get them guys on at some point for Cottonmouth Confusion 3. Because <laughs> it's just so bizarre, man. The way... Everything went down from like 2012 to now. It's been 12 years of confusion, man. You know? Who's in the band? Who's not? Who's working on music? Who's not? It's just weird. A lot of shady business. If you never peeped those Cottonmouth Confusion episodes, go check those. I think those are really good listens. On everything Cottonmouth and Subnoise. 
probably some of my better episodes I did, if I say so myself. Pat myself on the back, if I will. But yeah, speaking of sub noise, former sub noise affiliate or not, got to get the graphic up. Love when technical difficulties happen live on air. Don't know why this shit ain't working. But we got Mad Child, formerly of Suburb Noise. He, he was part of the reboot, the reboot that was going down earlier this year. It seemed like he's a part of it. During the live stream, Obnoxious said he's got a project with Mad Child in the works. So maybe that'll come out through Suburban Noise. But, excuse me, Mad Child did drop his, fuck, excuse me, his new album, The Little Monster LP. The graphic was fucked up. I, I thought this shit was an EP the entire time, but it's an LP. The Little Monster LP is out now. Haven't got a chance to listen to it. Um, if it ain't a single at this point, towards the end of the year, I'm not going to listen to any albums till the new year starts. I got to wrap up my top 20 albums of the year. So I'm revisiting some albums to figure out which ones I like better than others to try to get that top 20 list coming. So be on the lookout for that. But Mad Child did drop his new album. I'll peep it. I'll give it at least one listen. There's always at least a few bangers on every Mad Child project that he does. I'm still holding out for that Swollen Members reunion at some point. Longtime Swollen fan. But his new album, Little Monster, on his new label, OMG, One Man Gang Records, out now. And then this one, this one came out of fucking nowhere. Choir Boy Dank, formerly of Swagtooth, dropped a new project with Lonely God. It's called Cornerstone Communion. I thought this was a single that was up on SoundCloud. It's only up on SoundCloud right now. I know it's coming to all digital soon. So I hit up SoundCloud. I follow him over there. And I was expecting to listen to one song. I click on his page and shit, five tracks. It's an EP. I listened to the first few, uh, first two in pre-production of the show. And I, to be honest, I wasn't really, di- wasn't really vibing out to it. But I fuck with Choir Boy Dank. Dude's dope. Been fucking with him since Swagtooth. Um, if you're a Choir Boy Dank fan, check it out. You might like it. To me, it's it's kind of straying from his normal sound that he does. I feel like his last projects have really done that. The one that, that was produced by Blockhead, that was a completely different sound than normal, uh, than we're used to from Choir Boy. The first two tracks on this Cornerstone Communion, same thing. A little bit different. It's not that heavy bass trap sound. That swag tooth and, and what Ouija's still doing. So it's a little bit different. I wasn't really feeling it, but I'll I'll peep the rest of the tracks just because I fuck with them. Maybe there's a banger on there. I don't know. But it's out on SoundCloud. Coming to all digital outlets soon. Shout out to Choir Boy Dank, though. And then we got this one. We've been talking about this for a while. Buckshot. Been a little quiet for 2020. But this dude always stays busy behind the scenes. Hasn't released a lot of music this year. But we got the first single off the Double Dragon project with Kung Fu Vampire. Don't get beat up. I was speculating a few weeks ago if this is going to be a single or if this is the actual album. It is the single I bumped it like five times before, you know, in pre-production for show. This track's fucking hard. I don't know who did the production for it. Super dope. Kung Fu Vampire is a fucking beast. Dude is a beast. Kills it, man. His last album, Come Dawn, was fucking amazing. Love that album. He kills it on this track. I love the beat. Love the hook. Buck and Kung Fu kill it on here. I'm copping the project when it drops. No doubt. I fuck with Kung Fu Vampire Heavy. And uh, Buckshot's that dude. I like these collaboration projects that he does. The Paradigm Shift with uh, Boondocks was dope. That Hell's Kitchen shit was dope. I like these collaboration projects. Definitely copping that Double Dragon when it drops. 
and uh, peep this single. This shit is fire. If you ask me, fire. I kind of went into it with n- no expectations. I, I, you know, Kung Fu and Buckshot on a track, like a pro- actually a project, because the track is, you know, whatever. I think Kung Fu's done shit with Buckshot before. But like doing them doing a whole project together, on paper, to me, doesn't really make any sense. Two completely different styles, but on this track, shit works. I'm a peep the project when it drops. Caught me a hard copy. I know that shit's coming. Buckshot always does the hard copies, limited editions, and all that. Dude knows what the collectors want and that mob style shit. People go nuts for it. So peep the track if you ain't peeped it. Shit's super dope. If you ask me, and keeping it with uh, mob style, underground Avengers class. I don't have the actual advertisement image here, but it is the cover art for Article 3 of Revenge. Dude dropped them, I think, the first two parts earlier this year. COVID hit. Shit came to a halt pretty much for everybody. And haven't heard much from class. He did come down with Corona. Maybe a month or two ago. Seems to be doing better now. So that's good. Shout out to class. Glad to see you doing better. But Article 3 of Revenge is dropping New Year's Day, January 1st. Super dope. Can't wait for the album to drop. I did peep the first article of Revenge. I liked what I heard. Didn't peep the second one just because I don't like hearing half an album before it's dropped. But I get why. We, you know, artists are dropping EPs of their albums before they come out. Build them streams up. So I can't hate on it. But that's dropping January 1st. Shout out to Class. Glad to see him doing better. From the Corona shit. Shit is still real. You know, Jamie Madrox seems to be doing a lot better too. Or I don't even know if he was actually sick. He never really even said. But he seems to be doing better. Which is a plus. It's always a good thing. And then we got... I'm, I'm like looking at my stand back there in the background. Looking at it on the camera. Shit is uh, all the way fucked up. But uh, ICP News. We were waiting forever for the Juggalo show. Waiting forever for the Juggalo show to go down last week. I ended up recording a late-ass podcast. I'm recording another late-ass podcast this week. Only because I've been... Just busy as shit. The holidays. And, you know, whatever. Just been busy. And. Yeah. (laughs) Lose my train of thought. We were waiting for the fucking Juggalo show to go down. Didn't go down till Monday. Big news from the Juggalo show. Is it really big news? Because we all knew this shit was coming. Yum Yum Bedlam. Delayed till March 5th. 2021 who didn't see this fucking coming right it's highly disappointing because i would just like to get an icp album this year cap off 2020 like i said the shit year with a new album from icp but we gotta wait till march which will make it a little over two years since fearless fred fury dropped not bad turnaround would like to see it a little bit sooner, you know, just the way music is pushed now. People like to argue, oh, you got to take time with Joker's cards, but I make the argument. I don't want to be 80 when fucking the fifth Joker's card of the third deck drops, which is the last one, allegedly. But they spoke about it on the um, Juggalo show, Rude Boy and Jump Steady. Yum Yum Bedlam delayed till March 5th. They also talked about... What else did they break down? They brace, They talked about the clown head paintings. Each clown head painting comes with a CD. All that shit. The prints. I, I, I really don't have no interest in it. So I didn't really pay attention. Uh, I think I took notes for it. Let me look. On my phone here. Now that I'm thinking of it. Yep, Juggalo Show. Explain the clown head paintings. 13 paintings. Each comes with a CD about that specific clown head. All right. And then they talked about moving the Hella Fresh Holidays to the psychopathic headquarters. That's another thing. They haven't sold the psychopathic offices. It was confirmed during the October streams that the 
psychopathic offices are indeed for sale. But they're still there. They're still in the W Fuck Off studio where they did the Juggalo show and the Hella Fresh Holiday shows. They're moving it from Violent J's house to the psychopathic headquarters because the Wi-Fi and internet at Jay's house sucks. Uh, and then they talked about the gift bags. See, this is a good thing why I take notes, right? Because I would have just left it at Yum Yum Bedlam delayed and moved it, kept it fucking moving. Um, <laughs> items for gift bags are in. Still working on songs. We'll receive items before Christmas. All right, let's call bullshit on this real quick. We will receive our bags before Christmas. I highly doubt it. USPS fucking blows right now. Packages are just sitting in limbo, chilling, doing nothing, right? He said, because of Corona, it's been hard to get into the studio to work on songs. How? How? They were literally in the fucking studio in October while the chat produced these, you know, helped ICP produce these songs. What's preventing them to get into the studio and record the songs make them reality just lame you know another lame excuse for some bullshit why they're late i hate it i'll always call it out i'm sick of the lateness you know people love it for some reason it's icp it's just what they do they're late fuck that hold them accountable but supposedly you know and then we got an email if you're subscribed to the patreon and all that we got an email saying that they're they're working on the songs, but all the items are in and we'll get them by Christmas. What are you going to fucking put the MP3 in the gift bag and send it to us? Thought we were getting a CD. If the songs are still being worked on, how are you going to press them up and send them out in time for Christmas? I bet we won't get them shits till February. And I'll keep you updated on that. On the podcast here beneath the dirt. All right. Um, yum, yum, be- yum, yum, bedlam delayed till March 5th. Here's another reason why I take notes because I forget shit. A new CD will be available on Christmas. Yum, yum's lore. I don't know if it's lore like L O R E or lure like L U R E. There's been you know, debate on it on Twitter. I seen, I said it was lore L O R E. If you look up the definition, you know, for lure, lore, whatever, they both make sense. I guess we'll just have to find out when it drops, but it is dropping on Christmas. It will be available digitally. And if you are subscribed to the hella fresh holidays, you will get the CD. And again, supposedly we will get this CD in our hands before Christmas. Maybe it will be mailed in with the peep show house party peep show package from October. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but allegedly we'll be getting our gift pack from the October streams and this new CD Yum Yum's Lore or the Lore of Yum Yum. Forget what it was called. I have it Here is Yum Yum's lore. The prelude to Yum Yum Bedlam, if you will. And we'll have the CD in our hands before Christmas, but it will be available digitally, iTunes, Spotify, on Christmas Day. So we ain't getting the album, but we're getting the prelude to Yum Yum's lore on Christmas Day. Let's hope that, in fact, goes down. And let's hope, in fact, that they say, because I, I posted the other day on Twitter, Ding Ding Doll sucks. It does. I've been forced to listen to that song during these Hella Fresh holidays too many fucking times. I said the song was meh. It was okay when it first came out, but I, I don't like that song, man. I just don't like it. It's not good. The execution of it is it's just a very bad ICP song and I can't see it being on a Joker's card and it's not a good sign if it will be on the Joker's card let's hope it'll end up on this Yum Yum's Lore EP and it's okay if their EP suck it's an EP it's whatever you know um 
But I'm looking forward to hearing what ICP sounds like in 2020. You know, they don't pump out music fast like a lot of these other artists do. So I'm curious to hear what they say. Hopefully, Ding Ding Doll gets cut from the album. (laughs) You know, I'm seeing people saying, oh, maybe they could work on Yum Yum or Ding Ding Doll to make it better for the album. And people coming up with excuses. My favorite excuse, this was the same excuse when Fearless Fred Fury got pushed back. Well, this is great. They don't have to rush Yum Yum Bedlam now. Or when Fred, Fearless Fred dropped, they don't have to rush Fearless Fred. Great. Now they can put their time and effort into the album. And that's why it got delayed. How about this? Don't announce a fucking album before it's done. I'm going to assume it's done. They just didn't let their distribution know. And distribution was probably like, bruh, you got to wait. Because they probably going through like Sony Red. If in fact the album is done. The other option is the album isn't done. And they're in fact actually having to rush to finish the album. Because they spoke too soon before the album was even complete. How about that? Not, oh, great, Let they, they get to take their time now. I got to play devil's advocate, bruh. I just have to. I ain't a fucking hater. Am I? Nah. I'm hyped for Yum Yum Bedlam. Stop announcing shit before shit is done. Complete the album. Turn it into distribution. Send it off uh, to the press to get pressed up. Before you announce it. Try that next time. Try it really hard. I know you can do it. But I'm hyped for it. I feel like if anything. They're probably rushing to complete it now. Instead of. Oh they get to take their time now. No. To get it out by March 5th. They gotta have that shit passed in probably. For distribution and physical. Probably by the end of this month. To get it in time. For the release date. Because you got to remember. ICP still sells a lot of physical. Compared to a lot of these other groups. That are out here. Fearless Fred sold a lot of straight up physical. When it dropped. So. I'm hyped for it regardless. I'm bummed for the fucking delay. Is what it is I guess. So let's get off the yum yum bedlam shit. Let's talk about the streams this week. For the Hella Fresh Holidays, Monday, right after the Juggalo show, we had the 20 Years of the Gathering podcast, Jump Steady Shaggy 2 Dope, Rude Boy, we're joined by Vinny the ICP Kid, shout out to that dude for staying down after all these years, you remember him from the Shockumentary, such a dope documentary back during the Great Malenko era. But they broke down 20 years of the gathering. Nothing crazy was talked about. It was definitely a dope listen. Uh, You know, they said Violent J was feeling under the weather. So that's why he wasn't there for it. Didn't really bother me any. Still an entertaining show. But the highlights of the show, to me, were Jump Steady basically saying fuck you to all the people that shoot fireworks at artists, light fires, and all that. You know, they talked about the Yellow Wolf thing where dude got shot in the face with a fucking mortar damn near, but still went on with the show. Um, And he's not wrong. We talked about this before. Y'all lucky if you're shooting fireworks at the gathering at artists on stage, you're lucky that they even still do the gathering because... A lot of people would probably fuck pull the plug on that and be like, nah, y'all are too much of a liability for us to be doing this shooting fireworks at the artists. Like, whatever. It's one thing to throw stuff at them on stage, but to shoot fireworks, man? God damn. And it was some other shit. Jump Steady basically said, fuck you. To other people, you know, destroying the porta potties as well. Fuck you to the people that destroy the porta potties. Because that's a big thing when they can't even get porta potties to the gathering. I don't know how many times it has to be beaten into your fucking head 
to realize to stop doing this stupid shit or else you're going to lose a good thing. You know, I don't go to gatherings. Just is what it is. I'd love to go, but it never works out. You know, whatever. Excuse, right? Blah, blah, blah. When I cry me a fucking river. But y'all going to lose a good thing keeping up with the dumb shit you do. Straight up. It'd be sad to see the gathering stop because of that. But the 20 years of the gathering podcast was dope. It was it was fun here in a lot of the old days, back when they were in convention centers, when basically the gathering was a, a convention and not really a festival. The first few years, they only had like five, six people playing, and it was like one day, whereas now it's like a four-day festival, music all day, all night type vibe. So that was a dope listen. And then we had... The Zen of Love podcast. It was ICP, Jump Steady, and Natalie the Ring Girl on the Zen of Love podcast. Honestly, I was looking forward to this podcast because the Zen of Love, it was supposed to, you know, the, the thing was um, call in and then you get love advice from ICP and Jump Steady. And really... I thought this was going to be like just a comedy fest, like some hilarious ass shit from ICP and Jump Steady. And it wasn't. It was the exact opposite. Like they were legit trying to give love advice, you know, to the best of their abilities. I, you know, I don't know if I'd really take love advice from Violent J or Jump Steady or Shaggy. And I don't know who the fuck Natalie the Ring Girl is, but. Man, what a fucking snooze fest this podcast was. Put me to sleep. Straight up. Woke up on the couch. Podcast was still going. Said, fuck it. I'm going to bed. It was boring. I got about an hour into it. Just boring. Ugh. It was a miss for me on this stream. What could have been comedy gold turned into, you know... A nap that I paid for. (laughs) And then Friday night, Saturday night, I'm sorry. We had the examination of a super ninja. It was ICP and Jump Steady 60 minute style. Doing the examination of a super ninja. Who was the super ninja? I was speculating in the chat room before the show that it would be Tall Jess. Because it was teased that it had a heavy Morton's List tie in. You know, the person they were talking about. So I just immediately thought Tall Jess because I'm pretty sure he was a part of putting that Morton's List game together with Jump Steady. But it ended up being Danny K. Danny K, rapper extraordinaire from Detroit, Michigan. That ICP always talked about in their music and interviews. And it was the examination of the Super Ninja Danny K. This podcast was a miss with me as well, man. Um, so far, these December podcasts or streams just aren't quite as good as the October ones. Overall, there's some really good ones. The Gathering podcast was really dope. Um... I'm trying to remember some other ones. I'm pulling up the graphic here to read what other ones that they had. They had the Clown Cook-Off Show. That one was good. The Slideshow Spectacular was really dope. Um, But the Zen of Love and this examination of a super ninja like Danny Kaye. And they're playing clips of his songs and it's like the worst shit you ever heard. Do these guys really like Danny Kaye? And if they do, shout out to them for that. You know? (laughs) Like, that shit is... Ugh. Disappointing podcast. I won't be re-watching that one or re-listening to it while at work like I do with a lot of their shit um, with these streams, but it just wasn't good. Yeah. Danny K. I guess shout out to him, right? But tonight, Monday night, December 14th, we got... The Holiday Love Auction. This is dope. Because there was no auction 
or no gathering this year, they were unable to do an auction. So they're doing it during the hella fresh holidays tonight because this podcast comes out on Monday. So tonight at 9 p.m., bid on rare and exclusive items directly from the clowns, all for a great cause. They talked about it during the Juggalo show. 70% of the proceeds will go to charity. The thirty other 30% goes towards back payments on Violent J's mortgage. So that's dope. It's all for a good cause. And Jump Steady's talking about one of the items that he's putting up for auction is an OG copy of Morton's List still sealed with OG hand-drawn um, sketches that he had to do for the game. Now, if you're into those games that ICP and Dark Carnival Games put out, that's super fresh. I know that shit, it, like, Morton's List and, and those games, they do get sought after. Once they get sold out, they are sought after. So, that's dope. You know, I'd like to pretend that I'd bid on some shit, but... If there is any like any kind of rare audio, rare audio always goes for stupid money. But you never know. You might see my dumb ass in the chat bidding on some shit. You never know. And then one last news bit from ICP. They dropped Dog Beats. They talked about this in the October streams. I didn't think this was actually going to happen. But the Dog Beats reissue with the Fat Ronnie cover. This was the original photo shoot, I believe, for the Dog Beats cover before they ended up going with the one with the clown hanging from the rope upside down. So you got the Fat Ronnie cover right here. ICP's Dog Beats available on CD, coming soon on cassette, and there will be posters available as well. And this reissue is coming with a bonus track. The bonus track is is the Ask You Something song that was on the OG Forgotten Freshness album. That song is fun. I love that song, but there was only ever shitty audio quality versions of that song available. I'm really crossing my fingers on this one and hoping that this Dog Beats is going to be remastered. I'm hoping. And that we get a really good sounding version of that Ask You Something song so super dope i love these old school nostalgic drops from icp um but shame on fucking icp at the same time for charging taxing motherfuckers on shipping handling ten dollars for a cd y'all are gonna charge ten dollars to ship a cd that is super whack, super whack, super lame, man. Like, what the hell? $10 to ship a CD? Absolutely not. So, I still copped it because I'm a collector. Just charge 20 instead of the 15 and then 5 for shipping. If you want 25 for the CD, charge 20 charge 5 for shipping. I'd be less mad at that. <laughs> Honestly, and you would still get the same money. And I'm seeing people saying that they're not ordering it because of the shipping cost. If you want 25, charge 20 for the CD and then five for shipping. Five is still a lot. Media mail costs 280 to ship a CD. 390 first class. So five, you know, with the shipping and handling. Charge that extra dollar, whatever. Fucking $10 to ship a CD, man. Fuck out of here. Even though I still bought it. So, who's the real asshole? <laughs> I guess I am, right? Um, let's get into some Magic Ninja news. Attack of the Ninjas. Tickets for the digital concert experience, if you will, has gone up for sale. Up on livefrom.events slash AON AOTN. I'm gonna pull it up right now. But live ticket uh tickets for this live stream did go up. 
And we got performances from Jamie Madrox and Monoxide, also known as Twisted, along with Blaze Your Dead Homie, A and B, a la Zuli Lou, X Murder Boys, ROC, Gibby Stites, Oh the Horror, and Red. So basically the entire Magic Ninja staff, along with the Welcome to the Underground staff. We got a whole bunch of pre-order packages to go with this. Just the digital experience concert ticket is $17. And then you can get it uh, with a DVD for $25. They got a t-shirt bundle, a beanie uh, bundle, wall flag. Uh, they got a bundle with t-shirt flag, some other shit, a ticket, a hoodie, a jersey. Uh, I was not impressed with the freak show experience at all. At all. Such, that shit was like, I don't know, budget friendly. Let's say that. Very budget friendly, right? So it gives me very little, um, I guess, hope or anticipation for this Attack of the Ninja stream. Is it just going to be or is it just going to be them performing like how they did at NetFest and how Blazing ABK did in the pre-show to the Freak Show experience where they're performing in what I presume is the Magic Ninja warehouse, offices, whatever, studio? Is that what everybody's going to be doing? If so, is that worth the $17 to you? I haven't bought a ticket yet. I don't know if I will being completely honest. Um, the stream is going down. When is it going down? Wednesday, December 30th. Uh, Wednesday, December 30th. Let me look at my other schedule, if you will. Going down also that way. That night is ICP's Pointless Pizza Party. <laughs> Shit, it looks like I got a lot to look forward to December 30th. ICP's Pointless Pizza Party and Attack of the Ninjas. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to get this Attack of the Ninjas thing just because the Freak Show Experience thing was just so poorly put together. It just wasn't good. I wasn't feeling it. I felt like I was cheated out of my money, to be honest. So I probably won't get this Attack of the Ninjas thing unless they entice you or entice me with some kind of other pre-order pack, a bundle of some sort, a CD or something that you can only get buying this um, stream. But Attack of the Ninjas is going down December 30th, featuring the whole MNE roster. And speaking of Magic Ninja, Jamie Madrox posted up on pretty much all his, uh, you know, Instagram, Spotify, uh, not Spotify, Twitter, and all that. Maybe it was Twisted's page, whatever. But Jamie Madrox has his own Spotify playlist now. And he wants to know what songs. You want to see him put up on Madrox's music, uh, Madrox's music picks. And then here comes along Isham. If you haven't been, I haven't really been covering Isham's trolling on Twitter, but it's been funny. Dude shows love one minute, and then in the next minute he turns around and starts trolling people. ICP twisted. You know, I've seen him show love for Twisted on some music videos and whatnot. But here comes Isham commenting on Madrox's music pick. And he says, add Slim Anus. That's my favorite song you made, Jamie. <laughs> Shout out to Isham, one of the most petty motherfuckers ever. And I'm here for it. I love the pettiness from the godfather of the wicked shit. It is entertaining and funny. It is just funny. Put Slim Anus up on there, Jamie. That's my favorite song you ever did. That is hilarious. Shout out to Isham for always staying talking shit. Trolling motherfuckers. 
And I'm going to start covering his trolling more often that I see um, on Instagram and Twitter because it's just too funny. I don't know why I haven't been covering it, but shout out to Isham for doing that because, you know, there was the whole controversy, Twisted doing the interview, allegedly denying that they were in Twisted Beef, which they didn't deny that they were in the beef. They just said they didn't want to do it. They were just kind of, their hand was fucking forced into it. But shout out to Isham for the, for the trolling. I appreciate it. I appreciate the pettiness. Always have from Isham. Dude shows up to the gathering with uh, selling CDs, dissing ICP. That is level 10 trolling. Love it. Shout out to the godfather of the wicked shit. I know he's the cover of this week's episode. And the title of the episode is Stay Trolling. And I'm only talking about it for two minutes. But I'm giving props where props do. Because this was highly entertaining to me. I laughed. It's funny. I hope Jamie Madrox laughed when he saw it. Probably not. But I hope he did. Because it is fucking hilarious. And speaking of Isham. Isham, very quietly, unless you are subscribed to the Acid Rap email list. I didn't even know that there was an acidrap.com email list, but apparently there is. And in that email list, it was put out that Isham is re-releasing and remastering his Dead Flowers album. It's up for order now on acidrap.com. Acidrap.com. Which is, you know, whatever. All these remasters that he's been doing, he remastered Boomin. Boomin' Words sounded phenomenal. The EPs, those desperately needed to be remastered, sounded amazing. Kill the Fetus, Close Casket. Um, he remastered Not His Life After Death and Blasphemy. All those remastered um, versions sound phenomenal. And here he is remastering probably his best sounding album he ever put out was Dead Flowers. I don't necessarily think it needs a remaster because like I said, it's probably his cleanest, loudest sounding album he ever put out, especially during that 90s run. But I'm a hard copy collector. I got my order in for the Dead Flowers remastered edition. Super dope. Um, So that's out. He hasn't promoted it up on any of his socials that I've seen as of yet. So that's a fresh little tidbit. If you don't, if you didn't know, now you know. And, you know, I I know that they were already remastered, the Judgment Day albums, Judgment Day 1 and 2, but they were remastered so poorly. The bass is so distorted on that, it like it'll blow your speakers. At least that's what it sounds like when you listen to it. You know, that box set, and there was a whole debacle behind that box set, but I would like to see Isham put out Another remastered edition of Judgment Day. Getting it remastered by whoever has done all these other remastered versions. And I'm only going to assume that this Dead Flowers remaster is going to be just as good as the other ones. So whoever did those, he should get to remaster those Judgment Day albums and put it out as a double disc. In a jewel case, double disc, combine the covers as one That would be fire. The track list, the day and night track list on the back. That would be dope. I'm kind of just freestyling this off the top of my head. I just thought of this now. That would be super fire because in all honesty, the OG Judgment Day sounds better than the remaster. And that should never happen. But whoever did that remaster for the box set fucked it up. If you listen to it, don't listen to it at high volumes. And even if you listen to it at low volumes, it just sounds bad. But all these new remasters, like I said, he's done. Or whoever did it sounds great. And I'm looking forward to the Dead Flowers remaster. Shout out to Ishan for just quietly dropping that out of nowhere. Let's get into some more new music, shall we? We got new Snow the Product. Snow the Product. 
I haven't been talking about her in 2020. I believe I, I'm pretty sure I used to talk about her all the time on the podcast when she dropped new shit. Why I stopped, I don't know. But I kind of fuck with Snow the product. I know I've said stupid shit about female rappers before. I don't relate to them or whatever. But yo, when you spit like Snow the product does, she got a new song out called Tell You This. This shit is fire. Dude, super dope. Produced by Ander C. Ander SK. Or C. S. C. I don't know how to read. If you haven't figured that out by now, I don't know how to read. But. New Snow the Product. <laughs> New Snow the Product single. Tell You Like This is fire. Peep this shit. I bumped it a handful of times in pre-production for the show. And. Snow the product killed it on this track. I really dig it. And I'm going to start covering her shit because she's one of the few female rappers I do fuck with. Her shit is super dope. So go peep that. It's available everywhere. And then we got New Liquid Assassin. It's only up on YouTube right now, but I think it is coming to digital soon. Usually when Liquid Assassin drops shit, it hits YouTube first, then Apple Music and Spotify. I fuck with L.A., Liquid Assassin, dude, super dope, mad underrated if you ask me. But his new single, Sweep the Leg, is out right now. Haven't got a chance to listen to it, but I definitely do plan on listening to it. L.A. is that dude, and that's out right now. And then we got the new single from Them Chains. This is Clockworks Group. Clockwork, formerly of Gorilla Voltage. And I don't know the other guy's name in the group. I still don't know his name. They need to fix that. They need to like start saying dude's name so I can learn it and say it during the show. But I don't know this guy's name. But Slave to the Chase is out on all digitals now. They dropped the video for it last week, I believe. And this single is dope. Like I said, this is all clockwork on the vocals, the singing and everything. I thought the other dude was the singer and clockwork was doing the rapping and whatnot. But the other dude's a producer and clockwork is bringing it with the singing, rapping, harmonizing, all that. This single's super dope. I'm looking forward to the uh, a Them Chains project. I'm still looking forward to a Clockwork project. At some point, hopefully we get one or both in 2021. That shit would be super dope. Would love to see that happen. So that's it. For new music releases this week. And I talked about at the beginning of the episode. How. We were going to be doing something. That I didn't. Put in the text description of this show. And you would think I'd put it as. The cover art and advertise it. But I'm not. I am going to release it later as a separate clip on YouTube. But. Let's do it. I said, fuck it. Everybody's doing top 20 albums of the year. We had like the top 20 horrorcore artists earlier this year. Um, There was a couple other bullshit lists that dropped this year. And I was sitting on my couch one night this week. It was late at night. And I was like, fuck it. Let's put a bullshit list together. Not saying that this list is bullshit because I genuinely believe these are my top five Tech 9 albums. But I called other people's list bullshit. And I know, I know for a fact, people are going to call this list bullshit. So we're going to do it right here, right now. Episode 114 of the Beneath the Dirt podcast. Let's get into it. My top five Tech 9 albums of all time. This is going to be fucking fun. I've always talked about how Tech 9 doesn't have a classic album. People always come at me when I say that. And I guarantee my top five ain't like your top five. And people will be calling it bullshit. And that's fine. Do it. Number five. Ever Ready the Religion. Tech 9. This album, I was going to grab my hard copies before the show. And show off the hard copies as I talked about the album so I could look at the track list as well. 
but I forgot to grab the copies before I started recording. So what I'm going to do is pull up the albums on Apple Music so I can look at the track list. But number five is Ever Ready, The Religion. I love this album, man. Super dope album. It dropped in 2006. This album seemed like it took forever to come out. Between Absolute Power and Ever Ready, it just seemed like forever for this album to come out. And when it did, it definitely lived up to the hype. Super dope album. You got tracks on here like Riot Maker. There's very few songs that'll get me in a mosh pit in my old age, my geriatric self. And Riot Maker is definitely one of those songs that'll get my ass in a mosh pit these days. Love that song. Um, Welcome to the Midwest with Big Chris Calico and Twista. Love that shit. Night and Day. Caribou Lou. My Wife, My Bitch, My Girl. Come Gangsta, one of my all-time favorite Tech 9 songs. My World with Brother Lynch Hung. The Rain. The Beast. Ugh. Super dope albums from Tech 9. So number five is Ever Ready, The Religion. Super dope. Some people consider this a classic, but I won't, and I won't. (laughs) People are going to be bugging out about this top five list, but fuck it. It's my top five list, and let's get it to number four. This right here would probably be a lot of people's number ones, but it's my number four, Angelic. Angelic originally released on J-Core through Interscope Records, later re-released through Strange Music and MSC, I believe it was. But goddamn, this is a great album from Tech 9 This and KOD, you could consider to be horrorcore albums. There's definitely horrorcore shit on here. I guess you could say Devil Boy, Tormented, Psycho Bitch, Real Killer, Cursed, Suicide Letters. I mean, there's so many dope songs on here. Sinister Tech, It's Alive, Einstein Tech 9, This Ring, probably a top five Tech 9 album if you ask me. Twisted, super dope songs on here. Stamina, he used to start out shows with Stamina. I don't know if he still does. It's been a few years since I've seen Tech 9 live. But coming in at number four, Tech Nine's Angelic. It's a fucking super dope album. Love this shit. You know, t- you know, even if I say Tech Nine doesn't have classics, dude has bangers. And more bangers. Coming in at number three. This is the newest album I have on the list. And that is Nina. Dropped in 2019 last year. It was my number two album of last year. It was very close to that number one spot last year. And this is a super dope album from Tech 9 Love Nina. His best work in a while that he's put out. There's not one bad song on here at all. Favorite songs on here, I if I had to pick, probably be like, uh, Lord of Weird hit the ground running with JL and King Iso. <sighs> Fuck. Like I ain't greenlit with King Iso and Maze, man. This was what was really like. I was a fan of King Iso before in this album, but his features on here, man. God damn. Super fire. Then you had Chooky Fever. Very reminiscent to some like KOD shit right there. Love that song. Um, FTI 2.0 was super dope. I don't remember with C Mob, very dope. Active Chris Calico. One of my favorite songs on here is F U, Easier for You, featuring Chris Calico and Jelly Roll. Not the biggest Jelly Roll fan, but damn if that dude did not steal the show on that song. He murdered that track. Super dope feature from Jelly Roll on there. Phenomenal feature. And just an all-around super dope album from Tech 9 I know a lot of people have fell off through the years, but if you haven't checked out Nina, I highly recommend you do. You know? A lot of people don't check the newer shit. They just stick with Ever Ready, Angelics, 
Um, you know, the 2000s shit. But Peep Nina, it is a phenomenal album, becoming one of my favorite Tech Nine albums. I mean, it's in the top five now. Maybe at some point it'll be number one, but I love this album. Straight up. And then coming in at number two, we got All Sixes and Sevens. Phenomenal album from Tech Nine. There was a lot of hype around this album. When it first dropped, he he got that Lil Wayne feature. Lil Wayne was on here. Yellow Wolf was on here. T Pain was on here. He got a whole bunch of more. Deftones was on here. Kendrick Lamar was on this album. Hobson was on here. Twista, Busta Rhymes. A lot of people were on this album. I'm sure I'm, I'm missing some. I think. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember now because they're not showing the features on Apple Music. But favorite songs on all sixes and sevens: "Am I a Psycho," "Mental Giant," "Worldwide Choppers." I love music. Um, the Boogeyman, "Fuck Food," "Pornographic." I love that song. "Delusional," "If I Could," "Mama Nem," "Promised Land." Great album for Tech Nine. A lot of hype around this time. This is when he was starting to get more of that mainstream eye on him. And I believe this is when his crowd grew exponentially during this All Sixes and Sevens era. I remember going to this tour and it was off the fucking hook. And I love this album, man. I really do. My favorite, uh, my second favorite album from Tech Nine. Super dope. And then coming in at number one, I've talked about this before. It might not be a surprise to you if you're a longtime listener of the show or if you've been following me on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. I said if Tech 9 does indeed have a classic album, if he does have a classic album, and it's debatable to me if he does or not, but if he does, the closest thing he has to a classic is Misery Loves Company. Technically, not a solo Tech 9 record. This was the very first Tech 9 collabos album that Tech 9 put out. But holy shit, this is easily my favorite Tech 9 album he ever put out. His best, in my opinion, as well. Every single song on this album is super dope. Cut Calhoun was in his bag on this album and during this era. He was murderous in 2007. Midwest Choppers, super dope. That box, come on. That track is fire. Gangsta Shap. You know gangsters don't dance, they just gangsta shap. Super dope. Fan or Foe, I think Yuck Mouth was on that track. Fire. Girl Crazy, probably, no, definitely a top five Tech 9 song for me. Two Piece, Super Dope, I Can Feel It, You Don't Want It with Prozac, Message to the Black Man, The Paseo. Son, this album, in my opinion, if Tech 9 has a classic album, this is it. Easily my favorite album from Tech. Easily the best work Tech 9 has done, in my opinion, is Misery Loves Company. The production on here, everything. This came out right after Ever Ready did. You know, I think not even less than a year after Ever Ready did, this album dropped. And it was super dope. I have an autographed copy of it. I pre-ordered it through uh, the Strange Music website back in the day. And, you know, they always you always get an autographed copy when you do the pre-orders through their website. But yeah, that's it right there. My top five Tech 9 albums. Shit on it. In the comments, if you're listening on YouTube, hit me up on my social medias, if you will. I welcome it. I shit on other people's lists thinking they're stupid. I definitely know people are going to think this list is wild.
and that's okay with me because this is my list, and I stand behind this list. Number five, Ever Ready, The Religion. Number four, Angelic. Number three, Nina. Number two, All Sixes and Sevens. And number one, Tech, I mean, sorry, number one, Misery Loves Company, my top five Tech Nine albums. Let me know if you're watching on YouTube or even if you're listening on whatever, let me know in the comments what your top five Tech Nine albums are. I want to see what everybody's top five Tech Nine albums are. I'm curious to see how, you know, what variety of albums people are going to be putting for these top five Tech Nine albums, because I believe it'll be drastically different um, every list. But I stand behind my list, like I said. Yeah, my top five Tech Nine albums. And <laughs> shit on it all you want. I don't even care, because I know it's a wild list. Super dope. Um, and let's get into the new fan favorite segment of Ask Grown. I actually have a graphic for it. There it is. I don't have to get into the center of the screen. So what we're going to do, we're going to start out on Twitter, move on to Instagram, and finish up at Facebook like we always do. So let's go to Twitter, see if anybody gave me any topics and or suggestions, questions, what have you for this week's Ask Roan. Let's see, on Twitter, from what the? Look, at T Gruber 3323 on Twitter says, what's your worst rapper, rap duo, and rap group of all time based on weak slash trash albums that they have? Um, worst rapper, rap duo, and rap group of all time. Shit. That's tough because I don't listen to music that I don't like. And if if there is trash rappers, like I don't listen to their albums, you know? So shout out to T. Gruber for the question. If I had to name off some trash rappers, though. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, like, who's not good besides, like, you know, the blatantly obvious, I guess. You know, who do I not like? Up top of my head. I, I don't know. I can't even really think because, you know, I would think of some shit like the Franchise Boys or that whole scene, you know, Soldier Boy. Shit like that. Like, I can't name bad albums from trash rappers because I'm just not listening to the albums. You know, if you're bad, why am I listening to the album? But shout out to T Gruber for the question. Let's see what else we got. Uh, on Twitter. Mind Bomb Music says, why is the third hand on a watch called the second hand? Third hand, second hand? Don't know. And then we got a reply from uh, Slap My Tweet Box. Why is it called a watch when we only take a look? Another good point. So not much on the fucking Twitter front for those fucking... <laughs> for Ask Grown this week. Let's go over to Instagram and see what's going on for the Ask Grown segment comment section over there. Digging Hip Hop asks, Did you memorize a particular verse by heart from Twisted or ICP? Which one in particular and why? Can you make it live? Yeah, countless verses from ICP and Twisted I have memorized. I could probably rap the Great Malenko front to back without missing a single word. So, you know, why do I memorize the songs? Because I love them. You know, why does anybody else memorize lyrics to a song? Because you love the song. So, yeah, just countless Verses from ICP Twisted. I could probably rap most tasteless front to back. 
beginning to end, you know, beginning to end without missing a word. Uh, the homie Jiggles. The homie Jiggles is like a day one podcast listener. I'm pretty sure a dude been listening since episode one. Shout out to the homie Jiggles. He says, can you rank your Riders albums, including m and Riders? Well, shit. I just gave you my Tech 9 ranking. Um, so, the Riders. Did I rank the Riders album on YouTube already? I'm going to look that shit up. Because I might have already ranked um, Riders albums already. Uh, Riders albums ranked. I'm just going to do a search on YouTube. Uh, Speaky Clout did it. He did Dark Lotus. Mike Sears, shout out to the homie. No, I did not do a Psychopathic Riders ranking. And I think I didn't do it because I did a Dark Lotus one instead. But if I were to rank the Riders albums, and I think I've talked about this before as well. Start from dumping and then go down the line all the way to the M&E Riders albums. And... Dumpin' being number one, Riding Dirty being number two, and then so forth. Just in the order that they came out, is that's their position in order. So my least favorite would probably be the M&E Riders album, although a really good album. And then, what was it? Eat Shit and Die, fucking Duck the Fuck Down. Uh, my brain hurts. I can't think. I can't think of all the albums. But number one being Dumpin', number two being Riding Dirty, and then three, four, five, whatever, in order of the album's release. They just, they're not as good as the previous release, but they're all good. Like, there's not one bad Riders album, including the m e Riders album. So shout out. To the homie Jigg- Jiggles for that. And then we got Joker's Gallery coming in through with another one. Says, you get to go to any three concerts ever. Which three are you going to in your time machine? Any three concerts ever. All right. Uh, shit. What? I'm. Uh, that's a tough one. All right, a concert I wish I went to was the Hatchet Rising Tour. I didn't get to go to the Hatchet Rising Tour for whatever reason. I didn't go to that. So I would love to go back and go to that Hatchet Rising Tour. It was Dark Lotus, ICP Twisted Blaze. I don't know if ABK was performing. I don't remember. Let me know if he did or not, but would definitely go to that Hatchet Rising Tour. I would go to the Up and Smoke tour. Dr. Dre, Snoop, M, Cube. I think Dog Pound was there. A whole bunch of motherfuckers. Like, one of the most classic tours ever. I wish I went to the Up and Smoke tour. I remember it was in Worcester, too. And I didn't go. But I wasn't really a big hip-hop head at that point. So that's, you know, probably... I was just, just getting into hip-hop. At that point. But. um, I wish I could go back to that. That tour. And then. Third tour. Or concert. You know what this just popped into my head. The Wizard of the Hood concert. That'll never happen. Well. You know. It's always never say never. But it looks like that shit will never happen again. And that gathering. Was super lit. It was the last year Twisted played. I wish I was at that that shit as well. Now, let me do a flip coin, you know, flip side to that question. Let me do three concerts that I've already been to that I would love to go back to again. Number one, Wicked Wonka tour. Would love to go back to that tour. Classic tour. Super dope. I would love to go to... I would love to go back to the Great Southern Trend Kill Tour, Pantera, White Zombie, and Deftones. That was my first concert ever. Epic as fuck first concert. 
I got to see White Zombie live. I got to see Pantera live. Deftones, when Adrenaline first came out, amazing show. And for my third that I've been to that I would like to go back to again would probably be... What's another great fucking concert that I've been to? A lot. A lot of fucking tours. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen ICP and Twisted perform on the same tour together. And I don't think I ever did. But you know what? I'd like to go back to that Rock the Dead tour with Twisted. Right before Freak Show came out, they played Upstairs Palladium. That shit was packed. That was my very first Juggalo show. Was Twisted. It was Blaze opening up. Tickets were like 12 bucks. Fuck yeah. Shout out to the Joker's Gallery for that question. Super dope. And then we got D Spanos 8421 on Instagram. How do you feel about the Deftones remixes of White Pony that dropped on Friday? I saw that they did it. I didn't listen to it, and I don't know if I will. Why fuck with a classic? Why? Like, if you ask me, White Pony is a classic. Um, I don't know why they would do a remixed version of that album. I don't know. Just doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. I probably won't check it out. If there are hard copies of it and I have to look into it, I'll probably cop it just for the collection because I have all deaf, excuse me, all Deftones albums on CD. And then Richard, let's go to Facebook. Richard Smooth asks top three worst ICP features on a track. Top three worst ICP features on a track. Um, I mean, they don't really do features outside of psychopathic shit. One that comes to mind was their feature on Ouija Max Gutter Water album on Diamonds, I think it was. The song Diamonds. That was such a dope song from Ouija. And then ICP came on and fucked it up. You know what's another one they fucked up? Was um the fuck's the name of the song? Is it the title track on Abominations? On Twisted's Abominations album? I'm gonna look it up now. But their feature on Twisted's Abominations album was horrendous as well. Let's see. Yeah, the title track to the Abominations album with ICP. Terrible. Terrible. Wasn't good. And then a third one, uh, Cottonmouth Kings, the Wicked Clown song on High Society. I wasn't a big fan of that feature, man. Like, that track was so hype. KMK and Dog Boy was killing it. That beat was super live. And then all of a sudden, the beat slows down. Violent Jane Shaggy step into place. Never really felt it. It's okay. But those are the three I could think of off the top of my head. And that's going to wrap it up for the Ask Roan segment um, for this week. And shout out to everybody that submits a fucking question on the Ask Roan segment. And as I'm thinking of it, homie of mine asked for a favor and wanted me to drop a quick little plug for him. I believe we talked about it on the podcast that he was featured on. The homie Chuck Reeves was talking about he was going to be entering a beard competition. I think we talked about it on the podcast at the beginning of the year. But there's going to be a live stream up on Twitch, um, the National Beard and Mustache um, Championships of 2020. Uh, If you want to watch it, it'll be on December 19th. On Twitch, you can get a direct link through Chuck Reeves' website, BeastHostBeard.com. Shout out to Chuck and his uh, long-ass fucking beard that he got. And that'll be going down December 19th. The mustache, the Beard and Mustache Championships of 2020. And that's going to fucking wrap it up. For this week, episode 114, an hour, 20 minutes. Holy shit. I think this is the longest episode I've ever done dolo. 
by myself. If you're still tuned in, hit me up on my social medias, drop a comment on YouTube and let me know that you're still tuned in an hour and 20 minutes in. Shout out to everybody that listens to these long ass episodes. And shout out to everybody that shows me love. 2020 has been a great fucking year. We're gonna wrap it up in a couple weeks, but thank you for tuning in. I'm Ron Bone of the Beneath the Dirt Podcast, and until next time, I'm out. Peace. Thank you.